tourist in media, right? Yes. And what would you say is the media and the format of the future? The format of the future, well, you know, basically I'm a futurist that looks at technology, media and communications. Yeah. And part of that is just branding, advertising. But if you look at what's happening in media, I think the most important part is that, that we're going away from the issue of buying copies like DVDs or CDs or, or even books to more of an access-based medium. Right. So all of the digital content that we have moves into the cloud. And so our music will be up there somewhere in the Google Cloud or whatever cloud and we'll just get access to it through various kinds of devices. How do you look at the future of advertising and marketing? Do you have any ideas about that? <laughs> I have a few ideas about that, advertising, the future of advertising and marketing. I mean, basically, the you could almost say that we don't really need advertising or marketing in that sense because now we're connected. Right? In a connected world, we don't need any of that stuff because in a connected world, we tell each other what we like and we also we're able to find and being found. Right? So if a brand is strong, if it's magnetic, then I find it and it becomes relevant to me or not. But I don't have to listen to a pitch on the side of the freeway. Right? So the, the whole idea of uh, marketing being interruption or being some sort of yelling, you know, we don't need yelling here because either we're friends or I'm not going to react to your yelling, right? So that is only possible in a connected economy. The television that we used to have did not know who I was. Yeah. Right? And it didn't care if I pulled out the cable, nobody would know. Right? Yeah. It certainly didn't know my name. But on the computer and on mobile devices and on, on mobile TVs and on connected devices, every device I use knows who I am, right? This is yeah. also very scary. Mm -hmm. It knows who I am, where I've been, what pages I've visited, yeah. which locations I've marked, how we talk to each other. That's very scary, but at the same time, I always say data is the new oil. Right? Yeah. Right? It becomes such powerful data that I can use this data to customize the offerings that I will get. How do you look at the uh, advertising industry? Have they adapted to this new, um, to what, to the changes? Because I mean, you talk a lot for like the record industry and the broadcasting industry, and you also, you know, maybe for the record industry, it's, it's been too late somehow. But for the advertising industry, are they to meet the same challenges, and are they ready for it? Yeah, has you know, has the advertising and marketing industry adapted? You know, well, to a very large degree, they're facing the same disruption than, than the media industry, right? And the disruption is really quite simple. The user can, can now connect to what he likes, yeah. other users and other brands. Yeah. They can go direct, at least in principle, you know, yeah. not always successfully, but give it two or three years, it will be very successful. Making the direct connection between the yeah. writer, like Seth Gogan, exactly. you know, and, and the creator. But, so now brands are facing the same disruption and many agencies or brands have not realized that this is basically the new paradigm of marketing is making that connection. And looking at the brands, I mean, we've been talking a bit about before about uh, it sounds like branding about the four E's. We talked about connecting to people through emotions, through engagements, through experiences, and through exclusivity, rather than only the four P's of product, price, placement, and promotion. Do you have any thoughts around this? Yeah, the four E's. You know, rather than the four P's. I mean, clearly in a world of, of digital connectivity. Anything that's sort of physical is less important, you know, yeah. product, price, uh, you know. I mean, all that, that part is basically a physical economy. Mm -hmm. right? We're going to a digital economy now, so, so therefore anything intangible becomes more valuable. I think personally, I think most consumers in the next five years, they're going to move away from brands that are not likable. Yeah. Right. So you're not doing anything for the environment. You're not doing anything uh, to to solve larger problems. Yeah. I think we're going to see lots of brands engage in art, culture, technology, uh, common goods. Yeah. You know, all of because that's what makes them likable, right?
You were saying a bit before, we were, we were touching on, on the topic of you know culture and music's role in branding and marketing. What, what's your take on that? What do you see? Why is music and culture becoming more important for the brands and what's, what's the future of this? Well, I, of course, you know, music, culture, art are ways that people identify who they are and who they want to connect with. I mean, it's like culture is not business. I mean, culture is about you like this food, you like this theater, I like it, so we're, we're like-minded people, right? And that's really what it comes down to. You're looking for like-minded people. Okay? So if, as a brand, I can identify like-minded people by a certain jingle or sound, you know, I'm going to use an evangelist, uh, evangelist soundtrack, you know, in my brand, or I'm going to use a heavy metal band, you know, I sound different. It's crucial. It, that's basically how you find like-mindedness. It's like in this hotel, we find like-mindedness because they like the design and the style or the food. Right? And so the theme of like-mindedness is going to erupt pretty much everywhere. Because that's really ultimately we gather around the same thing. What can we learn from the history of media? Because I guess there must be something to learn from that, right? <laughs> Well, yeah, of course, we can learn a lot from history, but you know, the the bottom line is, I think that if there is a development that is really impacting most of people, like the printing press, you know, you can't put the wrapper back on it by forcing issues. The church tried to obviously not; they weren't very happy with Gutenberg, right? For obvious reasons, they removed the, the control, right? But they made a deal, and then Gutenberg's invention became was everywhere and the church was stronger than ever before until today maybe right so you need to make a deal right? you need to uh, embrace what every single user wants to do and so in the media business that means you know it's going to be about access relevance it's going to be about finding a way of uh, price perception not dictating it you know? uh, and to me the the most central issue is like do you want control or do you want engagement right you can't be at a dinner table and tell everyone when to talk you're not going to have a very good conversation you want to have a good nice dinner you can't tell people when to talk you're going to have to take chances with the conversation